Well, hello everyone. This is uh, Dr. Claire Zengeli and Shenka Ponsley on the Shanks Show. Uh, we will have a very interesting conversation tonight. To me, Dr. Zengeli is one of the boldest physicians I have ever met, and I'm so glad she has joined us. She has built up a very, very interesting clinic in a small town in Texas called Quero. She will tell us all about this and it's gonna be a lot of fun. I will tell you that our viewers can participate in the conversation just by putting their comments on Facebook and on LinkedIn, we're alive. And if I see something that is interesting, we'll bring it in and we can have an interactivity here. Uh, Dr. Zengerli, how are you tonight? I'm doing good, how are you doing, Shankar? Me too. I am so happy that you are the fearless doctor because <laughs> this is probably the first time uh, you are doing this live on all these platforms with the studio that you have never seen and you just jump straight into it. And I find that to be a nice metaphor with uh, what you did with your clinic, wouldn't you say so? Yes, you're definitely right. It's the first time I've done anything live and... Like you said, this is the first time I've done a lot of things that I've been doing lately, running my own practice, a direct primary care clinic, and uh, all that sort of thing. Having my husband be the office manager and a wonderful nurse working out in the country on her own property. So everything is a first these days. Yes. And to give our audience just a little bit of an idea what it looks like there, uh, in Quero, we have a short video that we got from your website. So I'll play that and then um, we can continue the conversation after that. Come see me out in the country in Quarrel, Texas. We are going to deliver some fantastic medical care free of any third-party payment restrictions, no Medicare, no Medicaid, no hassle. Well, that's always nice to see that video. And I will say the first question probably a lot of viewers have is, where is Quero, Texas? Well, Quero is centrally located uh, between San Antonio, Austin, Corpus, Houston, South uh, Central Texas. Uh, it's about 90 miles from uh, San Antonio. I would say southeast of San Antonio, and it's where my husband was born and raised, and we've been living here since uh, 1995, yeah, 1995. Okay, so from for someone who lives in a, in a, in a city like San Antonio, uh, can you explain what, what Quero looks like? Because it's a completely different setting, right? Well, uh, it looks like small town America. It's got an old uh, main street with uh, historic buildings downtown. It's the home of the Gobblers, which is a well-known football team in Texas. Uh, they've won state championship before and the community supports them. Um, so it looks to me, you know, it looks like several of the small towns with a wonderful courthouse, nice downtown, good people, your usual train that runs through there. Uh, so I may not get the population right. I'm guessing 7,500, but don't quote mm -hmm. me on that. <clears throat> then yeah, well, it, it is beautiful out there. I uh, came down to visit and it is just really, really gorgeous. Um, but definitely, uh, as you say, small town, Texas, and it has a it has a great vibe. I have to say that. Um, now, are you are you from Quero? Were you born? Did you spend your childhood there, or or somewhere else? No, I grew up in Corpus Christi, and we lived on the in the edge of town, the northwest part of town. And I went to high school at Cal Allen. Uh, a lot of people have heard of that before. And it was uh, when I was growing up there that uh, had kind of a small town feel, even though it was the Corpus Christi city limits. 
it was a good drive to to town. So it was, a, I guess, more of a suburban area, but uh, had a really wonderful time in high school in Cat Allen and um, still try to keep up with some of those people down there. Mm -hmm. And um, what uh, usually people have something that's very formative that happened in their childhood, either uh, through what their parents did or their environment. Can you kind of remember or is there something that stands out to you where you say this is really something that I learned in my childhood and that has really um, formed my character? Like, for example, for me, uh, that was definitely growing up with a single parent, a single mom, you know, seeing how tough it is to make ends need and just taking accountability and responsibility for everything. So that, that's what I got from my childhood. What did that look like for you? Yeah, well, kind of a similar. I was uh, the youngest of uh, four girls. Uh, two of the, the two oldest sisters were like about 11 years apart between the two sets of sisters. And when I was six years old, my uh, father passed away. So uh, my mother became a single parent and she only had a high school education. So she still had two young girls to raise. The two older sisters were kind of starting to move on. Uh, so she had to buckle up and she went to college and got her teaching degree. Of course, it took a long time. She had to go to summer school and still had to look out after two young girls, you know, who were like six and uh, nine or 10 years old <clears throat> and raising us. So I think she did a very good job of all the stress and struggle of having to go back to college, get a teaching degree and got a teaching job and put up with us going through high school and put up with me doing the things I wanted to do. I was in athletics and played basketball and ran track and I was felt very supportive of that. And uh, so my mother had a good work ethic. And then some of the coaches that uh, were very good mentors to me in high school. And, you know, I feel like I got a good work ethic there. Then went to college at a and I in Kingsville, which is now part of the Texas A&M system, but it was Texas A&I. And uh, went to college there, thinking I would be a coach. And I played basketball mm -hmm. there and ran track one year. And then kind of changed gears and changed my major. So I ended up staying undergrad for a good while. Uh, decided to try to get into medical school during that time. So that's a short summary. Right. Was that... Uh, was that difficult for you getting into medical school? I mean, I, I know it's, it takes quite some some smarts, you know. Yeah, so I didn't get in the first time. I don't know why, uh, but <laughs> uh, so I applied again, and I was busy, you know, taking uh, extra college courses, you know, the basic the chemistries and biologies and all that, you know, going back and getting those basics. Plus, I got a job at the local hospital there in Claiborne County in uh, Kingsville, and that helped solidify what I was going to do. I had a health professor because I was going to, I was a health and physical education major, but one of the health professors said, you know, you ought to go to medical school. I'm like, eh, I don't know so much about that. And she was really supportive. And then so when I got the job at the hospital in respiratory therapy, we did a little bit of everything there, ran EKGs. And the medical director, the physician, who was an internal medicine doctor, was also very supportive in, of me trying to get into medical school. And uh, so I did and managed to get in. And, yeah, it was, it was challenging working and going to school. And mm -hmm. then before that, uh, before I got in, I met my future husband in Kingsville and so everybody thought oh no she's not gonna go to medical school because she's gonna get married and start a family but uh, no we got married and then moved on to Fort Worth and he moved with me and uh, he supported me 100% uh, while we went to uh, we went to medical school <laughs> 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 Definitely he learned yeah. all he, he learned everything you did too huh, by helping you Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so I know I know you are a DO. So there's DOs and MDs, and I'll let you explain the difference. You know, was that something that was clear from you from from the beginning on that you would go down that route? 
Yes, well, I had uh, applied to allopathic and osteopathic medical schools, but the more I kind of studied and learned about the osteopathic philosophy, and I kind of gravitated toward that. And then once I got the interview to go to school there, it's like, okay, this is this is uh, kind of what I want to do because it incorporates all the allopathic world, but you learn and you know additional skills and osteopathic manipulation, and you know it's kind of up to you how much you want to use that or not, but it also stresses the importance of how much the musculoskeletal system affects the rest of the body uh, being in tune. And so people think, well, it's like a chiropractor. Well, it's not really a chiropractic because there's so much uh, different other techniques, you know. Uh, so yeah, I actually spent the fifth year being an undergraduate teaching fellow in the manipulative medicine department. Uh, so that was kind of fun and did some teaching while I was uh, going to school uh, and so I was in medical school for five years instead of four years. But yeah, I really like the philosophy and mm -hmm. still do. So kind of gives me more of an open mind sometimes, I think, you know, pharmaceuticals yeah. versus not pharmaceuticals. Uh, and letting people have a little bit of part of the decision making in their health care. Actually, a lot, not a little bit, but yeah. Yeah. And, you know, one, one aspect that is not taught at, medical school we know that is certainly running a business and being entrepreneurial which you have yeah. dipped your toes into that um, but before we get to that i'm very interested in in so what was your journey your professional journey and did you regret the certain phases and also how did you eventually decide to it's time to open up a, a DPC practice? Well, uh, we had always wanted to come back to this area. Um, you know, I liked Quero. It was close enough to Corpus. Uh, so the whole time in medical school, I was looking to see if there'd be an opportunity to come back here and then uh, graduated and then uh, moved back to Corpus because I did my three-year family practice residency at Memorial Medical Center. Uh, in Corpus, right smack in uh, the old part of town. <clears throat> and so I was able to make some contacts here in town as I did moonlighting, uh, your second and third year of residency. I did some moonlighting in Refurio Hospital, a little town south of where we live, two towns south of where we live. And then I did a little bit of moonlighting in the ER here and met uh, one of the doctors here that needed uh, help in Goliad. So Goliad is the next town down the road from Quero and um, so Quero was kind of helping manage the clinic in Goliath so that would be perfect so it just kind of all fell into place I was able to um, <clears throat> help pay back loans because the area was a health man para shortage area a rural area so that helped pay the loans back which made a tremendous difference so we'd always kind of geared going back to the small town and started as uh, what well, still is a rural health clinic, but we didn't run the clinic at that time. The hospital owned it, and so we kind of contract work for the hospital. We weren't hospital employees, we were like contractors. And so that changed over time. Then the hospital didn't want to run the clinic several many years later. Then, you know, suddenly there's like, oh, we got to run our own business. So between myself and the two other doctors, uh, and one of the doctor's spouses who was the business manager, we had to kind of start all over and run our own practice. And um, that worked out well, although I personally didn't pay much attention to the management of it. Mm -hmm. You know, Daniel did. And because I just wanted to see patients and not worry about it, you know, so that's kind of your, your thinking. And, you, and like you said, you're not taught any of that. I still had no intention of uh, running my own solo practice at that mm -hmm. time. And then the management changed again, and then the hospital wanted to buy the clinics back. So we sold the practice back to the hospital, and then we became hospital employees. And uh, management changed again, and it kind of went south as far as, you know, my philosophy and how they wanted to run things. Um, so they got a new office manager. That didn't work out so well. So I decided, well, I'm going to do something completely different. Then I went to the work for the VA, VA clinic in Victoria, Texas worked there for about three and a half years so that's a whole different uh, ball game working for the veterans administration and the victoria clinic is affiliated there with audie murphy in san antonio the best part of the va was the veterans taking care of the veterans were mm -hmm. was, was 
was just awesome. Uh, they were good, but the delivery kind of left a little to be desired. And, um, you know, it's just a big, overburdened uh, government healthcare system. Uh, mm-hmm. So then I decided to, like, okay, I need to do something different. I'd like to get back into rural practice and worked at Lavaca Medical Center uh, part time from August, uh, this past August until June. But during that time, I had decided, you know, I think I really just want to do my own thing, run my own practice, and uh, started looking at direct primary care. I had not heard of it. Just kind of found it on an online search. Actually, I had been a member off and on of the American Academy of Physicians and Surgeons, the AAPS. So I had heard of Dr. Keith Smith, who runs the, the Oklahoma Surgery Center, I believe it is and have been doing that for quite some time. So then one thing led to another, ran into the Free Market Medical Association. Then on that, you know, saw Dr. Roger Machigimba's website, which uh, somebody named, oh wait, is it Shankar? It's you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So one thing led to another, it just kind of falls into place, you know, honestly with a whole lot of prayer and mm-hmm. paying attention, you know, if, if you pray and you get your, your prayers answered and you don't listen, well, you know, that's, that's not going to go too well for you. So anyway, yeah. so it, well, it, uh, it, you know, yeah. explain to us what, what direct primary care is, because we might have some people viewing who don't know what it is. And then also add to that, why you felt so compelled to start practicing um, along that healthcare delivery model. Okay. So let's see if I can explain this uh, simply. So direct primary care is a different model of delivery of healthcare. And there are some hybrid practices where they accept some insurance uh, or Medicare and there are some that don't. I don't bill any private insurance or Medicare or Medicaid. So it's totally a cash pay. And because there's no middleman and I don't have to hire a bunch of extra nail to fight with insurance uh, companies, the prices are significantly lower. And direct means I deal directly with you, the patient, and I don't have to work for the insurance company. I don't have to um, pay attention to what Medicare is letting them do or not do. Although there is still a little bit of that when you want to order outside tests, you still have to, you know, if they have their insurance or if they have their Medicare, you know, they can use that for their uh, hospitalizations for their imaging studies for the physical therapy but in a nutshell in my office primary care is just patient and I and plus the the whole one of the other goals is transparency and pricing so there's no surprises you know I have most all the prices listed on the website I have a list that I can give to them in the office like this is how much this is going to cost if you're a member at a very low price of $49 a month you know, you have certain benefits. If you're a non-member, you know, we'll do the traditional fee for service, but still have lower prices than the surrounding area. Mm-hmm. So people can decide. And the lab prices are just fantastic. They're very low, very affordable, just incredible uh, how the lab prices uh, work out for people. Um, so, and I don't have to necessarily have a diagnosis to order a lab. Of course, you don't want to order things unnecessarily, but uh, mm-hmm. I don't have to fight with Medicare to get a vitamin D level you know, or a lipid panel. So it's been in- incredible and we've been so far very well received, I think. And let me know if I left something out there. No, I think you, you explained that pretty well. So what is, uh, you know, how was, you, you said it's very well received and I'm just interested in, in your community and you care about it a lot so how because you you know it's something that is not really familiar to people and how was that how was that received in yeah, your I how it was going to go because it is a whole new concept and so you know you do have to do a lot, lot of uh, education and explaining and um you guys uh you know built a website and i there's that's just incredible because there was I knew I had to have a website, but of course knew nothing about that. And I knew I wanted to have someone that knew something about direct primary care. And of course you guys did. So it was just a perfect fit and uh, been very responsive on making changes, you know, constantly managing that. So 
uh, that is incredible. And the fact that I can get the prices on there and get the explanation on there and the forms on there. And then, um, of course, we can tell them over the phone and explain about it when I come to the office, we can give them the choices, you know, we can pay this way or we can pay the other way with the membership fee. Oh, and the other thing, of course, is uh, for primary care is having access to me. So essentially, the people have access to me. If they're a member, technically 24-7 through an app called Spruce that they can put on their phone and they can send me text messages, they can send pictures, they can send documents, they can say, hey, I need a refill of something or, hey, I want to make a telemedicine appointment or a face-to-face -face appointment. So that's the other thing. Telemedicine is an option if people uh, live, you know, out of town or further away and they don't want to drive all that way. So mm -hmm. there's that. So and so some people, they go, you know, when they go there, they're not quite sure they want to pay. And some we've got members right there on the spot. They go, oh, yeah, I want to do this. And so now because of the advertising, you know, we've run ads in the paper and then uh, some a presence there on social media. Uh, the word word the mouth is getting around. Mm -hmm. so we always ask people when they come to the office how they heard about us and then some interesting stories. <laughs> yeah, what's your record. favorite one? <laughs> well, there was a there was someone uh, a young girl that came to the office just the other day, and uh, <clears throat> she lived in the next town over. I said, "Well, how did you hear about us?" Well, I called my mother, and she was on the bus to Worthington, Minnesota. So it's the whole goes into the whole turkey trot thing. Worthington, Minnesota has a turkey trot, and Coral, Texas has a turkey trot. So their festival is now our festival. Um, turkey trot is in um, October. So Coral takes a team and takes one turkey, and they race with Worthington, Minnesota's turkey down the street. I've never been there. And then in October, Worthington, Minnesota comes to Quarrel, and then they race the two turkeys. Never has the fastest time with those combined races win. But anyway, so this lady's mother was on the bus going to Worthington, Minnesota, and uh, she said she asked other people on the bus, "Hey, my daughter, my daughter needs to go see someone. Who would I go see?" And someone on the bus said, "Go see Doctor Zingerly." So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's so awesome. there she was. You know, she last time she. Ben was, uh, you know, when she had seen a pediatrician, so she didn't have a primary care doctor. Uh, wow. She, yeah. Anyway, so, just, you know, um, remind me your opening. When, when, when was your first date? Uh, your, the, your we first opened date? August 1st. August 1st. Okay. So, uh, one month, one and a half months in. Right. And, yeah. How, how do you like it uh, as a professional you know it's your new it's it's a very different way of doing what you do um i'm really thrilled i've really been probably happier in practice and than i've been in a long, long time because you know the whole burnout thing was kind of had been starting to kick in uh for for quite a while and just like you know uh but i don't have that i really look forward to it and it seems like you know we started out what i would call slow but i don't have anything to compare it to is in not having a 15 or 20 patients a day, but mm -hmm. I'll never have to have that. So that's kind of nice. Um, so, you know, if we had two or three and they're, you know, joining the members, we're doing good. And I have to give credit to you. You suggested the early bird membership before we even got started. And that helped a lot. I think, I'm not sure the exact number, somewhere around 25 or 26 members mm -hmm. joined the early bird. And now I was uh, looking today, I think we're right around 63, 64 members, something like that. And then several non-members. So we've had probably 80, 84 patients coming through. And some have been repeat. So, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. you know, I can tell because this is, I'm looking at your Facebook now. We've had uh, steady 11 viewers there on your page. Oh. And I, I see love Dr. Zengerly here from Pam Edge. So people are commenting. Oh, and, you Pam know, Edge. Thank you, Pam Edge. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you can, yeah, we can try and get in questions if I see them. Uh, let me bring up my profile as well. Uh, yeah, that's super exciting. And, you know, I, I really have to commend you for, again, your, 
your fearlessness also in in uh, being a business owner there and just jumping jumping head in and i know we also show this on the san antonio free market medical association facebook and i know there's always physicians who are thinking about it should i should i not what advice do you have for them what let's let's say this what is the what do you want to have in place before you take the jump Boy, so I'm still considering myself a newbie and, you know, really learning on the fly, learning as I go. I would say just do your homework and learn what direct primary care is and uh, see if that's for you. I don't know. It's hard to imagine after starting and how it could not be for you because uh, I think you're going to have such a better lifestyle and not so much the selfish part of lifestyle, but like I can feel like I can deliver so much more to the patient and, and not hurry them up. I can listen to them and take care of their needs and um, spend some time with them, which is what they want. And if they want in and out in a hurry, that's, that's their call, you know? So yeah. just, um, it, you know, I guess it's going to depend on where you are. If you have to pay rent on a building, if you have your own building, you know, we had a little bit different situation where we bought the, uh, a building that needed to be finished out and, of course, I have my husband who could do that, and his uncle. Uh, lucky we didn't have to uh, borrow a lot of money for anything like that. <clears throat> so just do the homework. Make sure that uh, you can get the lab prices through LabCorp. Make sure you understand the membership content. See what your prices are in your area and be competitive with that. So, you know, obviously mine are lower than they're going to be if you practice in San Antonio. You know, uh, just a uh, different clientele you need to be reasonable. So, mm -hmm. but and, and you are very reasonable. What are your rates, by the way? Forty nine dollars a month. Forty nine dollars a month, yeah. and that that means what? That means that uh, you pay less than a cup of coffee a day at forty nine dollars a month compared for what? to uh, for the membership for the DPC, where you have access to me. And your your visits are dollars, whether you come in person or whether you um, uh, want to do a telemedicine visit. And uh, of course, you have the uh, wonderful lab prices, cash pay prices. Like a CBC is around two dollars and fifty cents. A metabolic panel is about two eighty, somewhere around uh, those areas. Um, so you have that, and then and the access and most of the tests, the simple tests, you won't or you won't have to pay for. They're included. A COVID test is a little more expensive, but uh, cost a member, I believe, $45. A non-member is going to be $70. So the website kind of has those prices side by side, member versus non-member. Uh, and plus you get time. You know, if you're a new patient, you get an hour appointment, a repeat Imagine patient. Imagine that. I mean, that yeah. is, we know it is, it's on average 15 minutes that people get. Right. Yeah. Established patients going to have 30 so I don't have to have a waiting room full of people sitting and waiting and your wait time is significantly reduced. And, you know, we want to try to get it that way too. Mm -hmm. Well, I can see here another commenter, Christina Zamora. She's great from Goliath, Texas, she says. So. Thank you, Christina. <laughs> I appreciate that. See, you have a lot. And I mean, uh, I would urge anyone who is in that area to uh, go and check out your website, um, call them, ask your questions. It's really a service that, that you won't get anywhere else in the area. I, I mean, it's just what it is. You want to have the good old physician patient relationship back. That's where you need to go. That's just yeah, it. Thank you. Um, you. Can I add one more thing? Yeah, of course. The other thing I forget is, uh, yeah, so you can email and you can ask questions. And, you know, we check the email uh, routinely. I was checking it last night and made some, somebody for appointment on Monday last night, you know. So uh, they got, uh, got in and we'll see what they need to have done. Uh, mm -hmm. The other thing is if you call the office after hours, we're not in. It goes to voicemail. The voicemail goes to our email, so we'll hear that you know, while we're here at the house. So 
Well, right? and Pamela Mokfa says Dr. Z is amazing. So you, you have a bunch of people on your Facebook who vouch for you and uh, emailing and calling you. Just go to uh, Dr. Z Medical Clinic dot com and you can find all that information. Um, yeah, so I am curious as someone who is interested in entrepreneurship and business ownership. Uh, do you do you have a mentor or where do you learn currently? You know, with all what you are having to to do right now. Well, with the whole DBC, I'm gonna have to give all the credit to Dr. Roger Machigimba there mm -hmm. in San Antonio at Direct Med Clinic. You know, I, he's I've kind of bugged him to death, I think, and he's been very helpful. <laughs> yeah, he is and the, Greg and I went up to visit with him in San Antonio, and uh, uh, he told us about Spruce and Hint, you know, the billing uh, company, and just that set a lot of our minds at ease. You know, so many questions. So mm -hmm. he's been very helpful. And then, of course, you guys have been very helpful. You and Andrea, uh, you know, got me out of a bind many times. Yeah, <laughs> was, uh, Dr. Mochi Gamba, Dr. Roger Mochi Gamba of directmedclinic.com. He is the co-leader along with me and Andrea of the San Antonio Free Market Medical Association, San Antonio F mma.org if you're interested to learn more we explain a lot about what it means to apply free market principles to healthcare delivery there's information on there for everyone for the uh, physicians for ancillary services for brokers who are interested in working with dpc and also with cash pay and then also pharmacists employers very important if you see this and you're a small employer and you've been wondering how can I provide benefits to my employees with a limited budget I want to do something for them but traditional insurance is just not something I can do and even if I offer it nobody can afford it and uh, people don't meet their deductible even the copay is crushing them right so if you want to know more about that go to sanantoniofmma.org and if you live in or around Quero, of course, go to Dr. Zengali and uh, sign up for a membership. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I know there's a lot of small employers around the area. So we'd like to be able to kind of help those people out if they haven't ever been able to even consider getting health insurance. You have to understand that this is not insurance exactly. way that you can keep your employees healthy, keep them out of the hospital keep them at work and you know just short drive to the clinic and be seen and um, help with that you know you can pay the employee the membership fee or half and half and so it's very affordable for a small business to get some health care for their employees and you know they could still have those high deductible plans if they want you know so we're, we're also good for people that have insurance but have a very high deductible and will never mm -hmm. beat it unless they have something catastrophic happen which you know that that does in life but that's that's yeah. what those plans are for uh, so yeah yeah that's exactly what i did when i was a freelancer that's when i discovered dpc and i i think i i paid about close to 500 dollars a month for a, a marketplace insurance that i never used and then I discovered Dr. Moji Gamba and, you know, that monthly uh, membership fee was just a, a fraction and it was just exactly what I needed. And as you say, you know, there's, you should, you know, if you can have a, we call it a safety net and maybe have a high deductible uh, plan that is really high deductible because you're not going to use it unless you have a, a catastrophe happening which of course we don't want that but uh, and then there's also um, now there's brokers who have who really understand and get what DPC is and they build products around your core offering Dr. Zengali uh, where where there's still you know when people say well, Dr. Zengali what happens if if you can't help me anymore and then there's still a solution for that and I know you are in, in conversations with, with uh, brokers like that. So 
uh, they yes. can still come to you and ask for solutions, right? Yes. So, you know, those cost sharing plans, we want to be able to <clears throat> provide the outpatient care, which we could probably meet 85% of your health counters. But, you know, if you need to have inpatient, if you need to have surgery, then some of those cost sharing plans uh, make a lot of sense and are very affordable. There's the Christian Health Care uh, Ministries, there's MediShare, and there's Sidera. We met with one of the Sidera people just yesterday with a, a Zoom meeting to learn more about them and what they offer. And of course, Eagle Care with uh, Harlan and uh, mm -hmm. Pickett. So yeah, there's those plans out there. Yeah, and, and you'd be surprised how much it helps when you have a doctor that you know can help you navigate, you know, everything. Right. It's just going to save you so much time and money. And uh, so, for those who are viewing live right now and who know of a small business please please send them a note you know send them the website uh, it, it doesn't cost anything to have a chat with dr zangerly to see how that would help um, or if you don't want to send something to your small business owner friend just get just pass along the the number to dr zangerly and she'll reach out and just you know inform inform yeah. and that's that's what what you are about about educating people and if people are in the area feel free to drop by we've had people drop by you know with pharmaceutical reps or people we've had a neighbor just down the road and said hey i want to see what y'all look like you know and never been down there for a while I didn't even know they lived down there so down the farm to market road we live on so yeah so if you want to just kind of take a look and see what we're doing and talk to us firsthand we definitely welcome that Okay. Well, that's, it's been awesome. And I, you know, you can tell whenever a, a live stream consistently has viewers, they don't drop off. And I am keeping an eye here on the right hand side. You know, you had 13 and I would say on average 10 who stayed on. So it just shows how much the community loves you. And thank you for you viewers. And thank you for, for supporting Dr. Zengeli. Um, you know, again, you are, you're fearless. You're doing this live here and, you know, did a fantastic job. Uh, any final thoughts you want to leave us with before we wrap this up? Well, I do want to personally thank all those that are out there watching. Uh, definitely that is greatly appreciated. So uh, spread the word and, you know, if there's something I can help you with regarding your health care, let me know. We can do minor emergencies we can fill you up i don't have x-ray but order those for you we can do uh, skin biopsies lesion removals your annual exams um just your chronic disease management or um most of your health care needs um people that know me know what we do and uh, a lot of people out here know daniel and he's managing the practice i think some of them come to see him instead of me because <laughs> He likes to bend her ear a little bit. Plus, you know, I do have to mention that we do have a super nurse. Her name's Darla Shelton. I've worked with her for many years in Goliad, and she is very thorough, very personable, takes good care of people, and she draws blood most excellently from uh, people and uh, gets the lab uh, blood ready to go to the lab for the lab court lady to come pick up. Um, anyway, I think that's about it. Um, feel okay. free to drop by ask questions awesome well thank you so much i am letting you go now and then i'll, I'll wrap right. it up with a a goodbye and uh, we'll be in touch dr zangerly right. take care everybody <laughs> bye bye-bye well, that was The Shank Show with Shanka Poncelet. I own a healthcare marketing agency in San Antonio. We have an amazing team that is specialized in helping you get the word out about healthcare and wellness. And also, if you are wondering about how to be visible on social media, please go to socialmediacontentmaster.com. Follow me, connect with me. I definitely love being in touch with everyone. You have a wonderful evening and we'll see you very, very soon again on the interwebs. Bye-bye for now.